Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac. This is uh, not a random run, this is not an Isaac run. This is, uh, as we're starting in Media Res here, you're probably aware. Uh, or can at least have a hunch that this is a Universal Item Pools mod. It's been a, a few weeks since we've done a Universal Item Pools mod, so for whatever reason you're joining the series, kind of as it's happening, uh, what this basically means is that normally, you know, items are restricted to... Wow, we got very lucky to find the secret room there. Uh, items are restricted to uh, certain rooms. Some items are, at least. For example, uh, it's extremely unlikely to find Sacred Heart out of the uh, Angel Room. It may actually be literally impossible without breaking the item pools. Uh, let's see what we've got in our item room here. Maybe this will be a good example. This is not a good example. Um, but what this does mean uh, in this one is that those restrictions are lifted. You know, we could re-roll the bean and end up getting Sacred Heart. Uh, we could re-roll the bean and end up getting another item room item like the Unicorn Horn. Or we could re-roll the bean and get a fetus item. So we might as well use our re-roll straight away. Oh my god, why does this keep happening? Like, that is the second time, I think, in as many videos that we've seen Monster of Tooth show up on that first item room re-roll, which is so frustrating. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I set this up in Spider Mod. For a while, it wasn't working. So I'm hoping that it has begun working, otherwise uh, this is just going to be an Isaac run, but that's okay too. Unfortunately, we will not snag another reroll, uh, and the reroll on a Universal Item Pools run is extremely important, so I don't think there's any reason for us to just, you know, take Monstro's Tooth. Not to mention Monstro's Tooth is kind of like, you know, if you're going to stop living the single life and settle down, and you're like a, you know, a Ryan Reynolds type or something like that, you know, a Joseph Gordon-Levitt, you're not going to settle down for your, your second grade geography teacher. It's going to have to be like Gazelle Bunchin or something like that. Similarly, with the D6, we're living life, you know? We're Leo DiCaprio. We're not going to settle down with a monstrous tooth. We need to get something, uh, of, of course, you know, maybe the monstrous tooth has a beautiful personality or something like that. It's a very kind soul. I'm just saying, you know, D6 is like living a Hollywood lifestyle. Monstrous tooth is kind of garbage. So, we, I actually, before I leave, the pentagram is a, a sweet pickup for sure. No question about that, but I am going to pick up another key. I'm not going to use it to open the shop on this floor. We'll use it to preferably uh, be able to go to the shop on the next floor. And actually, the shop seems very, very viable because we have an arcade as well, and that 9 volt is going to be extremely useful for us. So, I'm not going to um, necessarily pick up the 9 volt straight away. I can't believe I got hit there. Uh, because what I would need to do is play the Blood Bank a little bit more. And in order to play the Blood Bank, I want to make sure my health is relatively set for me, if that makes sense. Fighting Pin means we're going to have an extremely easy boss fight here, and we could have a deal with the Devil. On Universal Item Pools run, which we haven't seen proof that this is necessarily a Universal Item Pools run, because all the items have been, even the Pentagram, uh, have been, you know, gated, or items that could have been gated to their rooms to begin with. Pentagram is extremely rare to show up on the, the boss room, but it does happen from time to time. So it's impossible to attribute that to universal item pools, but anyway. We'll kill Pin. Uh, deals to the Devil are extremely less valuable on uh, universal item pools run. This seems like it might just be a vanilla run. I don't know, I swear to God, I loaded it all into Spider Mod, whatever. We're gonna reroll Cat of Nine Tails for sure and pick up an HP upgrade. So you know what? We're doing a vanilla run here, it seems. That's cool, at least we got the pentagram. Uh, I apologize for that. As mentioned, this is kind of I, either, you know, error between keyboard and user or... I forget what that joke is when tech support has like a, uh, you know, a euphemism for when the, the user is the problem. I could actually be the problem here, I don't know. I'm just uh, doing what I, I did before, I think, and it's not working out well for me. Okay, so I should probably just hang out on that health a little bit for now. I maybe should have picked up the mark, uh, given that I'm on a universal item pools run now. I could have re-rolled the deal with the devil items, but I was not thinking about it. It's okay, though. That spirit heart is extremely good, and the small rock extremely good as well. This is a very high damage Isaac run right now. We have two keys, one of which will be absolutely necessary to access this item room. Uh, the other one will probably save. I would love to get another bomb, even if we have to buy it from the shop. That's totally cool. And I would also love... To get some more rerolls. Uh, this is not the mulligan. This is infestation. Infestation's all right. Uh, since we're getting the nine volt, there's no reason not to be okay with taking infestation, except that we're gonna get another reroll. Uh, and you know what? No matter what consumables we get from these champions, I'm gonna be a okay with it. Uh, getting that one penny guarantees that we'll be able to get the nine volt just by playing the blood bank. And we got two pennies, and we actually got a heart as well. Um, I, I honestly think that it's probably in my best interest to reroll Infestation. Demon Baby, I think, is a little bit better. Infestation's good, but it's not that good, you know? Uh, and if we get a little bit more money, then uh, a little overkill, if that makes sense, then I would love to blow up that Tinted Rock and maybe improve my chances of survival uh, even more. 
We'll see, though, because we're going to get... I'm going to go low on this one because I have the damage, I think, necessary to sustain myself. And hopefully we'll get the HP upgrade. We didn't, but that's fine. Uh, and then we're going to gamble a little bit here. We want hearts and bombs. Keys wouldn't be bad either. Uh, why hearts and bombs? Hearts allow us to get even more money. Bombs allow us to uh, get that tinted rock. Hey, we got two bombs. Excellent. Okay. So I'm going to just go buy the, uh, the 9 volt as soon as possible. There we go. I guess for five cents we could have just gotten the... Uh, Spirit Heart there to begin with, but that's okay. Instead, we'll go back here and use one of our bombs to get it, and we'll come away with one more bomb as well, which I think was a better value proposition, although still not stellar. Now, that should get that, and maybe even the second secret room if one existed. We got another bomb out of that. So I think we're okay to go down to the next floor. This was pretty good, all things considered. We ended up leaving with an HP upgrade, a damage upgrade, the 9 volt, and Demon Baby. That's a really good payout for the, uh, the only the second floor of the game. Could look for the secret room, but uh, I'm not going to. I'm going to save my bombs because right now, getting tinted rocks I think is a little bit more valuable. Being on the catacombs scares the shit out of me just a little bit. I'm really like, sincerely I apologize that this is not a uh, universal item pools run, at least it seems like it isn't. It's always hard to prove something by a mission like that, but uh, you know, it, it definitely seems like statistically we would probably know if it was at this point. We would see some kind of aberration. Uh, our, our p-value, or alpha value, I guess, is like over 0 .5, 0 .05, sorry, if it's over, it could be over point, or it could be over 0 .5, but, uh, whatever. We're gonna check out our curse room. Curse room has brimstone. If we're gonna throw on the entire run, might as well pick brimstone up right off the bat, huh? And one up is a totally re-rollable item. The onk is, uh, also not that fantastic, so I'm totally okay with using another bomb and another re-roll to check out what we've got going on in our secret room there. So yes, I did take Brimstone. I'm a bad man. Let's make this work for us nonetheless. Uh, I am slow, but I have an incredibly high damage laser. That's uh, the position, that's basically what I wanted to be when I was, you know, when I was young. What I wanted to be when I grew up is, uh, I don't really care if I'm as fast as Donovan Bailey, but as long as you can give me a, a super high power death ray, that's a okay too. So, we'll see what we get here, and where rerolls are warranted. Meat is fantastic, so I'll take that. That's just, a uh, you know, true in real life, too. Meat is just, it's a fantastic little, uh, invention, isn't it? And we'll take the pact with us as well. And that's not me, just because there's this weird, like, on I don't know if it's self-aware, or if it's genuinely unironic, uh, love of meat. People were like, I love meat. And, like, anti- let me put it this way. Um, well, this is not gonna be very good for me. I know that there's a lot of people out there that are unabashed in their love of carnivorism, unabashed in their love of meat. I love meat as much as the next guy. You know, there are people out there who are like, I love bacon, bacon's really, ooh, it's like nerd culture to love bacon. I just love bacon. Bacon's delicious. It's salty. Pork fat, when it's rendered and crackling, is just delicious. That's cool, man. But if you're one of the people out there who's like, for every animal you don't eat, I'll eat three. You gotta stop that shit, man. That's getting a little out of hand. I used to be a vegetarian. I was not a vegetarian for any kind of, like, moral high ground reason. I was, uh, thought for environmental reasons, I would try to, you know, pursue local food. And, you know, vegetarianism also, you know, it takes less energy to grow, uh, vegetables than it does meat, like, tenfold, whatever. I'm not judging you if you eat meat. I eat a ton of meat now. But whenever I would be like, I'm vegetarian, people would be like, Oh, why do you have to talk about it all the time? What? Oh, is it okay if I eat meat in front of you? Hum nom nom. And I'm like, okay, just relax, man. Let everyone live the life that they, they want to live. You know, they, they, you're like, I'm a vegetarian. And then they're like, don't mind me. I'm just going to bite into this juicy hamburger. Let me know if that bothers you. And you're like, you know, honestly, it really doesn't. And then they're like, yeah, I bet it doesn't, fucker. And they just like keep doing it. You're like, I don't know. And, you know, there are there's snooty vegetarians and snobby vegetarians as well, but I think they're in the minority. Whenever I'm, like, on Reddit and I hear vegetarianism mentioned, they're like, how do you know how, if someone's a vegetarian? They'll tell you. <laughs> how do you know if someone's a dick? They post that joke. Apparently, it's impossible to talk about, like, your life choices without being judged by other people. I don't know. It's weird, man. I, it, it's so weird to me because I was only vegetarian for, like, six months or something, but, like, sincerely, it, it always seemed like other people cared more about my eating choices than I did. And if you're one of those people, whatever, man, don't worry about it. It's all good. This guy over here wants to eat a potato sandwich, you're eating a salami sandwich, that's okay. If he's eating a ham sandwich, you gotta get up in his face because, like, why, it's the ham is a support meat, but, sincerely, don't worry so much about what other people do with their lives, it doesn't affect you. It makes you kind of a jerk. I don't know. What, what kind of tangent I even find myself on? That's the tangent I found myself on 
After I picked up Brimstone and was like, let's distract people from the fact that I picked up Brimstone. Plus, people seem to like the tangent I went on uh, a couple videos ago where I talked about how you always have a little bit of uh, Albert Einstein's semen over your face if you're also breathing in oxygen that he breathed in over the course of his lifespan, but whatever. I'm, I'm gonna embrace that kind of, I don't know, Carl Pilkington style stream of consciousness dialogue, but I'm also gonna try to get myself back into what the hell's going on. Uh, a tears upgrade is probably not super valuable for me right now. Would much rather have the HP. We uh, have been having a pretty good time on this floor, on this run in general, I would say, especially if we can get something good here. Those are bombs, and those are bombs. Pretty rare to see a four-bomb curse room, I think, but uh, luckily we made it happen. We're, you know, setting records. It's unprecedented here. It's been a quick run, too. We're already on the caves part, too, uh, and that's great news, I suppose, because we haven't even noticed that uh, we've made it this far. Not that this is exceptionally far into the game, but we haven't even noticed that we've made it this far, which to me indicates that I think we have a pretty good chance of uh, swinging this for the fences on the whole run. Check out what we've got in our item room. It is Anarchist Cookbook. You gotta make an argument for Anarchist Cookbook being among, like, the top ten worst spacebar items in the game, right? I'm trying to think of what would be in there. There's obviously some that I would put in there uh, that are worse than Anarchist Cookbook. Lemon Mishap is probably worse than Anarchist Cookbook, although Anarchist Cookbook, you could argue, you can, you can hurt yourself with it. Um, also trying to think, like, maybe uh, the Hourglass is a little worse than Anarchist Cookbook. It's hard to say, though. We're actually done with this floor. I'm going to use my last remaining bomb to look for some money up here. Okay, we got lucky and found the secret room. We got nine cents, which is, like, just too shy of where we need to be to be able to make this shop worthwhile. So I think I'm actually just going to leave this floor, and I know it was a, a quick one, but so be it. I would love to get another uh, reroll charge, but I don't think that's actually possible with what we've got going on. And you know what? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into the shop. Worst case scenario, we can probably buy a key, but maybe we'll fight Greed, and by fighting Greed, we'll get more money for the next floor, but also we'll get a one third of a reroll charge that we can use. Didn't really work out that way. <laughs> okay, we're well, just a waste of a key, actually. Um... I thought that we, maybe we'd get enough of a reroll charge to reroll um, the, uh, the bullshit that we've got going on in there. What, what even was it? After Anarchist Cookbook, I rerolled it and it became something else? Or did I even have a reroll after that point? I don't know why I'm spacing so hard on this run right now. Oh, it became uh, the bombs. So you know what? We should totally take the bombs. Um, it also gives, I mean, it gives us poison bombs, which is fantastic, but also uh, five extra bombs is really where that value lies for me right now. Let's go uh, right and down, and that'll take us down to the next floor, and with 4 HP, having set the precedent for taking a deal with the devil, I think we're going to be A-OK. -okay. Hopefully we get, you know, even two more HP over the course of this run would be amazing. The only other offensive item we need is the ability to fly. I could possibly get that for free, but I would gladly pay one to two red heart containers for it as well. But, you know, we'll cross those bridges when we come to them. I mean, I mean, like, sincerely, Jeff and Bo Bridges. When we come to them, we will cross them. I have a long-standing grudge about his portrayal of uh, Obadiah Stane in the first Iron Man movie. I thought it set bald-haired relations back, you know, dozens of years. Because now everyone's like, oh, you're bald. Like I, I shaved my head in, like, the summer of 2009. It's maybe 2008. It was the summer of 2008 when uh, Iron Man had just come out and everyone was like, you look like Obadiah Stane. I'm like, motherfucker, that guy is 60. I'm 20. Might have even been 19 at the time. So that's offensive, and you're like, is that the only bald? At least give me like a better bald. You say I look like like Michael Rosenthal or something like that. And I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. That's the the Smallville Lex Luthor actor. Um, but man, Jeff Bridges. But you know, you've done some great stuff, Jeff Bridges. Don't get me wrong. You're no Nash Bridges, but you're up there. Uh, but Bo Bridges, man, seriously, Free Willy Four. What were you thinking taking that project? I hope you didn't need that money to live. I hope that was like a passion project and you have like some unabashedly strong and, and you know, passionate love for whales. Because if so, that that's a better excuse than, you know, I needed that money to pay my bills. I'm sensitive to the bills issue, don't get me wrong. People that gotta eat, right? It's easy for other people to call people sellouts on the internet. Like, hey, Northern Lion's selling out. And then like, oh, Tanner, honey, dinner's ready. Come eat dinner in the house that we pay for. That, uh, you know, the free food that your, your father and I bought by working 40 hours a week for you. Mom, I'm trying to dispense justice on the internet. Just shut up, you bitch. Anyway, that's the way I rationalize it whenever someone tells me that I've, I've called my ethics into question. That's probably an unhealthy way to deal with that uh, pent-up rage. But anyway, um, yeah, but seriously, Bo Bridges, you must love whales, right? That's basically what I'm getting at. If you're watching this, hit me up on Twitter, man. At Northern Lion LP. Uh, I'll be 
answering questions about Bow Bridges long into the night tonight, like I do uh, every night to combat my loneliness. Now, we have 14 cents and a golden key, which is a uh, new song from Rage Against the Machine. They're switching to becoming like a Binding of Isaac core band, which is I thought was a pretty good decision because, you know, that whole like, you know, Rage Against the Machine thing, that's kind of uh, early 2000s, you know? It's like a Power Man 5000 type uh, aesthetic that doesn't necessarily fly anymore. We're already getting back into that guppy culture. It's about like corporatism now. If you're gonna get back into guppy culture, you might as well take the only game that's got Guppy in it, and that's the Binding of Isaac. So, I think that decision's gonna work out really well for them. I, I think it's gonna expand their reach. God, I'm bad. Uh, oh, okay, never mind. Well worth the red heart there to pick up all of the money that we did. Uh, which will make this shop worthwhile. We've only got one more shop remaining. Actually, now that I think about it, this shop almost certainly has greed in it. And there's uh, almost certainly no way to get around that. Really uh, not psyched about this room. The only thing that's good about it is that I do enough damage to take these guys out without putting myself into extraordinary risk. Uh, and you know what? Our our damage and our uh, rate of fire, which is something that is a, like a tangible change with Brimstone. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Uh, but our damage and our rate of fire are such that I feel really good about this run right now. But there are still some things that I would very much love to improve. For example, I would very much love to uh, pick up a compass. A Sorry, I'm just focusing on, like, all the matrices of dodging that I have to do here. As matrix, like, mathematic style, not matrix, like, Neo style, which is weird because I'm talking about dodging. But anyway, are you telling me I'm going to be able to dodge bomb flies? No. <laughs> Apparently those are my voices for Neo and Morpheus. It's just my voice and then slightly deeper version of my voice. I'm telling you when you're good enough, you won't have to. That is probably the worst. Uh, Neo impression, or sorry, Morpheus impression of all time. I'm getting low on health. Why am I not picking up the health that's in here? Was there health in here that I've missed? Am I? Oh, okay. Maybe that's a good reason. I feel like I'm having like a miniature stroke right now. And I'm not trying to trivialize anyone who has had a stroke. There are people my age who have had, you know, strokes and, you know, Bell's palsy and stuff like that. That's pretty horrifying, you know? You like to think, I'm 25. For half of you out there, that's probably going to seem pretty young. And for the other half of you out there, I might as well be your, your fathers. But, uh... You know, who knows, I might actually be, probably not, given my, um, you know, romantic history. It would be unlikely, let's put it that way. Um, but you know, you like to think you're invincible, you know, you take on the world. It's like, who's 25 year olds right now? It's like me and LeBron James. Basically, both the height of uh, physical and mental, uh, you know, performance at, at this time in our lives. But then when you hear people having strokes and, you know, other various related health concerns, you're like, man. Life's short and life's fragile, so I don't want to trivialize anyone who's had a stroke. That being said, I do feel like my train of thought is being particularly unusual today. Um, that's not necessary, necessarily a symptom of a, a stroke or a stroke-like condition. I don't know why, how many more times I can say stroke without making a masturbation joke, but I'm seriously trying to be uh, on the level here. Yes, uh, as mentioned, greed was an inevitability. That was a sick dodge from greed right there as well. Uh, I thought for sure I'd be able to get out of his path, but he decided, you know, no, this is how we're gonna do it. It's Friday night, I feel alright, the party's here on the west side. You know what I like about the song, This Is How We Do It? Uh, I listened to the lyrics for the first time, probably like two years ago. And that song, you know, Montel Jordan, Say What You Will, but he's got some positive uh, role model thing going on, I think. He's, he, he says, uh, he's talking about going to the club. At one point he says, designated driver, take the keys to my truck. That's really responsible. And I like that, you know, I'm not saying that if you if you have a song, no matter what genre, and you're talking about drinking and you don't mention getting a designated driver, that means you support drunk driving. It's just the kind of thing that maybe doesn't, you know, they, they, you don't need to rationalize. You don't need to talk about it. This is definitely getting re-rolled. Oh, they're both so shitty. You know, if you're talking about, you know, lick it like a lollipop, you don't necessarily need to talk about, like, well, before we went to the club, I called up my aunt, and she's gonna pick us up when we get too intoxicated. That ruins the mood, right? But I appreciate that Montel Jordan took some time out from This Is How We Do It to slice of life and be like, yeah, designated driver, take the keys to my truck. What a nice guy, right? Like Montel Jordan being a positive role model out there for all the other people who want to get blackout drunk on a Friday night. Not that there's anything wrong with that. All right, so we've uh, exhausted both myself and the, uh, you know, everything on this floor, essentially, that we can get. Didn't really pull out any extraordinary goodness here. I'm going to go back down and get that golden chest, I suppose, and then we're going to go fight the boss. And, you know, we didn't really pick up too much on this floor. Lucky Luckfoot is kind of okay, but, uh, I mean, it's better than okay, I suppose. Don't pick up the tick. That is uh, extremely... 
dangerous. Uh, it's better than okay, but it's also not going to win the game for us. Thought maybe we'd find the secret room by pure luck there. That was a really good chest, actually. For a bomb and a key, we got uh, like three bombs, one key, and a few cents. Don't pick up the tick. Almost picked up the tick. There is a real judgment in here, is there not? That's a slot machine. There's a demon judgment somewhere. Hmm. I guess if it's only a demon judgment, then I'm going to leave the floor because I can't afford to be super risky with the situation I've got going on right now. We are a little higher on HP than I was on the last floor, but still, uh, you know, we want to make sure... Why not just give myself the best chance possible of survival on this run? I would have a fun time if we managed to win this run. I know I'm using Brimstone, so it's cheating, but whatever. This is, a, you know, when I, I'm able to take my focus off uh, dodging, I can get into those tangents like giving Montel Jordan the respect he doesn't get on a regular basis from the hip-hop community. There's nothing thug about drunk driving. I, that was probably the, like, straight-up whitest thing I've ever said. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but sincerely, man. Occasionally, even at my age, when I was younger, you would come with... Then this is not, again, if you're older than 25, this is not me being like, oh, I'm so old. But occasionally at my age, you'll find people who are, like, proud of the fact that they drive drunk. But I'm, I'm proud to say that the culture is, uh, switching against that. Driving drunk is, like, the least cool thing you can do. You can look cool when you're smoking. I don't think you look cool when you're smoking, but some people do. You do not look cool when you drive drunk, though. There you go. Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Money in the bank. Check in my pocket. Thank you very much. Northern Lion, you sold out! Well, okay. That's fine as well. Um... But, that being said, as soon as self-driving cars come into, you know, the marketplace on a regular and commonplace basis, you're just gonna get drunk everywhere, right? Like, there's no excuse anymore. That's the thing, people are always like, what is the... What are our kids gonna think is so antiquated about our futuristic 2014 lifestyle? And everyone's like, you know, gay rights or, you know, trans rights. And I agree with that stuff, uh, very much so. But, I think the, the number one thing that's gonna be most universal for a lot of people is the ability to uh, drive drunk because your car drives itself. And it's safer, man. It's actually safer for you to be drunk in your car and for the car to be driving itself than to put you manually behind the wheel. That's gonna be awesome. I'm not saying I wanna get drunk all the time. I'm just saying I could now. Pre-drink? No longer do you have to pre-drink and then take a taxi or something like that. You just get in your car, pour some shots. It'll probably still be illegal for like 50 years uh, after the advent of self-driving cars. But one day, man, Think of the glorious world our children's children will live in. Drinking space vodka, absolute, you know, galactic rum, and uh, getting drunk on the way to the cyber club. Anyway, that's my vision of the future. I think we're sorely lacking that stuff, you know? The visions of the future that we got from like the, the late 90s and early 2000s, my formative years, were like the Matrix. It was all like green text on a black background and like console commands flashing up. That was cool. Now the vision of the future is like this hyper clean, like, Elysium and Oblivion style aesthetic, both of which were movies that I thought were like pretty terrible. Um, but let's say they're not, we're the Miller's level, so I'm not gonna go off on a tangent on that, but I, I miss that like grimy, like everyone's listening to Rob Zombie style future aesthetic that people genuinely thought might be the case. In 1999, I knew two things about what the year would be like in 2010. We would be living with, like, like cavemen as a result of the Y2K bug, which was just a guarantee, and somehow, like, the one stereo remaining on Earth would exclusively be playing Rob Zombie all the time. And that was like, I'm okay to live in that future. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of sad that it didn't happen. Like, our life is probably better as a result of it not happening, but, like, sincerely, that would have been pretty rocking for about, you know, 15, 16 months. Luckily, we do have a library here, so I can reroll the bejesus out of those. Uh, well, I've reached another dead end. The main caveat for me on this run right now is that I do not have a compass, and I do not have a map. It doesn't bother me too much right now because it was Curse of Blindness, but uh, it's going to be very difficult for me to find bosses. So if I actually end up finding a uh, an Emperor card, I would value that a great deal. Mind you, this has been a very strange run in that... I think I've gotten one two of spades and then no other tarot cards over the course of the entire run. And no pills over the course of the entire run. I don't know if that's just a random cha- Excuse me? Alright, well, all is forgiven. <laughs> I guess it was just random chance. Fair enough. Uh, I'll take these bombs and move onwards. Way to derail my complete train. I thought I was going to go talk about statistics and how, you know, just because you don't see something doesn't mean it's, it's proof of a trend or proof of a cause. Anyway. People are probably like, thank God, Troll Engine fucking saved me from another tangent. This has been a very tangent-heavy episode. There's a thread on Our Binding of Isaac. Uh, is this an XL floor? No, okay. Uh, there's a thread on Our Binding of Isaac 
And it, as soon as I looked at it, I was like, oh, fuck. And the thread was, uh, Biz Snap or Northern Lion. Which, first off, I always find that really funny that people get into that distinction. There are people who ask me on, like, a daily basis. They're like, so what do you really think of Biz Snap? Like, I know you put on this pro professional veneer. Ooh, where is this reroll gonna be used? I'll get back to that topic in a second. I'm gonna reroll these. Ooh, we're gonna come back here and take the speed upgrade and leave. If the, one of those had been Mom's Knife, no-brainer, uh, but because, you know, the nail could have been interesting, especially since we have the 9-volt, but whatever. Um, what do you really think of Biznat? That's what I was talking about. And people will be like, so I know you guys, like, you do videos together and you're very polite, but behind the scenes, what do you really think? And I'm like, first off, if you're at the point in your life where, you know, the thing that really drives you is asking questions about what you perceive to be YouTuber drama, that's something that, you know, I'm not going to judge you, but you might want to talk about that with yourself and ha have a deep conversation and figure out where your priorities in life lie. That being said, Bitsnap is a, a super nice guy. We have different personalities, but we still talk very, very frequently, uh, both related to quote-unquote business stuff and related to un-business stuff. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're social with one another. I'm going to open this golden chest and see what's in this mob trap room. And that's cool, but it, because we have such different styles, people, like, for whatever reason, have this rivalry set up between them. But anyway, I was like, oh no, I'm going to look in the thread. And in the thread, uh, you know, people were actually very kind, and I appreciate that. But one of the things that came up as, like, a negative for my videos is, like, Northern Lion goes off on tangents too easily. One of the things that came up as a positive for my videos is Northern Lion goes off on tangents too easily. So, you know, I don't think I'm going to change my, my commentary style. You like it, you don't like it, it's all good. If you don't like it, you don't have to watch. You know, that's the great thing about the Isaac community is that there's so many uh, great content creators out there that... Uh, you know, if you don't like me, you can go watch Bitsnap. If you don't like Bitsnap, you can go watch, watch uh, Namastag. If you don't like Namastag, you can watch Alpaca Patrol, or Green, or Zen. You know, Cobalt Streak, Lethal Frag. I'm not sure if Lethal Frag still does Isaac, but I, I don't follow the Twitch stream that much, but or the Twitch side of things that much on Isaac anyway. You can go watch Boiler, you know. It, it, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can get involved with, so... That's what I always am like, God, I wish Northern Lion would learn some more about the game. I'm like, man, there are already... There are versions of me that already know about the game out there. Now, it's up to you to, to find them. If you build them, they will come. If you build their following, they will come. Maybe even in their pants. I did for a while. Just happens to everybody. Now, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, take out Mom's Heart here. It should be an easy fight, uh, but I expect it to be a little bit longer than the past few Mom's Heart fights, uh, just because we're not doing crazy damage with Brimstone. It's pretty good. Poison Bombs are going to be very nice as well. Um, they're going to allow us to do things like that. Demon Baby is very good about keeping those bombs in a, a position where I'd like them to be. I do think we have a good chance against Isaac. Um, maybe not the best chance against Isaac, but I think we have a decent chance. So we'll see anyway. Uh, we don't have the ability to fly. We don't have map. We don't have compass. Those are not prerequisites for success. But they are very, very uh, useful. And that Eternal Heart is actually a huge pickup on this fight. Otherwise, you usually get nothing. Because I have the world card here, I'm going to use it right away. Ooh, the library is actually pretty tempting. Let's see what's going on in these rooms over here and if I'm going to regret uh, coming here. This room actually should, all things considered, be pretty easy. Uh, and we'll check the secret room as well. So I may or may not regret this. The secret room has three cents, which is meaningless, but um, we'll check our library. We're At the very least, oh, this is like... If I had killed them there, that would have been, like, the ideal uh, series of two rooms to run into. That's fine, though. We, we did totally okay. Uh, we might be able to... Um... <sighs> it's very tempting to just take one of these items, of course, but... Um... I think it's best to try to get, like, two extra items out of this from a reroll perspective. As, mu as fun as Book of Belial might be, and as useful as it might be, I would rather save my rerolls for... Uh... I don't really need lifesteal. I would rather save my rerolls for... The chest, because we'll have many opportunities to reroll four items instead of uh, instead of just taking the Book of Belial and getting a little extra damage. Well, a lot of extra damage. There's no need to, you know, denigrate it. Uh, we're gonna hopefully pick up. Yeah, I was hoping maybe we'd get uh, two spirit arts instead of just one, but a bomb for a spirit art is a pretty good trade. We did pick up uh, an HP upgrade. If you're just listening, if you're not watching, then you might have been confused about what happened there. But yeah, we got the HP upgrade. We've exhausted the books in the item room. Or, sorry, the, we've exhausted the books in the library, which means that we are good to go with uh, rerolls in here. Chocolate Milk plus Brimstone is a wild combination that I'm not necessarily an enormous fan of. I am going to go to one more room before we get ready to go to the boss room. Uh, and again, this should be a fairly easy room for me to deal with, even though I just took a little bit of damage. That's because I'm dumb. 
So, this will allow us to get one more reroll charge, and we'll have to wait a little while to get rerolls on the chest, but, you know, only one room. Like, a, a genuine little while. That's the definition of little while. If you look up little while in the dictionary, that's what it'll be. Um, it's, it's tempting again to go to the curse room, but I don't think, at this point, our, our odds of becoming guppy are quite low. Our odds of losing two spirit hearts by walking in and out are basically one, unless we got a teleportation on the way out. Ah, the shears. I probably should have picked. Ah, I probably should pick it up and then put it back down. But that's fine. We already got an HP upgrade out of this. That was worth our rerolls and the, the the one spirit heart we lost. Although spirit hearts and regular hearts are coming up to the point where they are, you know, roughly the same efficacy. I would say. Now, I if uh, standard rules apply for what you get in the chest, there will be at least one var variation on Mr. Mega or Brother Bob Om or Bob Om Bobby. I always forget his name. Anyway. But that means I can feel not so bad about walking in here and using poison bombs because we will probably get more in the future. Uh, and I'll probably reroll them, but, you know, at least they exist. So I'm actually having a, a very hard time on this fight. And this is one of the few rooms, and, you know, this is not unusual necessarily to say. Like, it's not something that's amazing to say. It's not amazing insight. But um, this is one of the few rooms where Demon Baby's existence makes things very hard for us. So if I can actually just hang out at the back of the room here... Uh, and not get hit and keep Demon Baby out of range. It's much better for us. And actually, poisoning uh, Isaac has some dubious effects because it does cause him to tick damage more often, which causes him to shoot more often. So we can fight him in kind of a laborious way here, but it'll make dodging a hundred times easier and we'll probably take substantially less damage as a result of being a little bit more patient. Mind you, uh, things are going to get a little bit more bombastic when he enters his third phase, which he just did. Got to be very careful about making sure that the angel fetuses are, you know, a priority. Maybe not our number one priority, but they're they're up there. And the more of them we can take out, the better. As long as we can keep the, the arena somewhat clean. Alright, I took damage. Let's drop a poison bomb. Hopefully, that's what I was hoping for. They would kill other angel fetuses in the meantime. Good. We're gonna we're gonna come out of this fight totally fine, even though I just took some dumb damage. Uh hopefully we'll snag another HP upgrade that heals us. Probably should have waited on taking the heart until after this fight, I guess, but that's you know, you're, you expect too much of me if you thought I would actually remember that. Okay, now we're on the chest, and we see Quad Shot. I don't know, I don't remember Quad Shot and Brimstone is like a damage down for Brimstone. I'm going to take Sad Onion and probably reroll the rest. I can't remember, because here's the way it might work for Quad Shot. Quad Shot may make Brimstone do more damage, but take substantially longer to charge. Or... Quad shot may make brimstone do less damage and the charge time may or may not be changed so You know I may be making a terrible mistake here, and if so I apologize, but you know this is me trying to think beyond just the basal The basal do 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 anyway you guys know the pixies at this point uh, I am going to come back and reroll those and I don't think we have much of a, a shot here at, at beating blue baby to be honest with you But that could change None of those are really worth it for me. If there was a mom's knife instead of sacrificial dagger, that could change everything. Oh, I, I like dodged out of the way of Peep and then became a total dick and just stood right next to him. Sorry, not Peep, bloat, obviously. Uh, and I'm starting to feel like I just got home quicker than a ray of light. Dodge that one surprisingly effectively. You should be dead. You're not dead. You'll be dead in a second. Okay, thank God. Uh, Mom's pad is actually a very worthwhile item for the very final fight. Prior to that, a little bit less uh, important, but... Whoop. Very interesting dodges uh, afoot here. I did get, like, triple damage there, because I, I hit all three Lokis at once. If I can hit at least two, I'm happy with myself. That one was just one, unfortunately. Probably could have gotten two there. There we go. That's the one I'm looking for. One more vector like that would be great. Oh, perfect. Okay. These guys, I don't know if they buffed Loki recently. He's become increasingly annoying, though. Maybe that's just my own personal take on it. You should be dead. Like, very much so. There we go. All right, and the tarot card is Wheel of Fortune, which is very useful, uh, of course. A full health card, uh, or the sun card, probably would have guaranteed me a win, or at least put me in a good position to get one. That's okay, then we put Wheel of Fortune back here, we blow it up, and then we, uh, you know, one orbital in the form of Sacrificial Dagger wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But, uh, we're gonna reroll all four of these in the hopes of getting really crazy good items. So, Lard is up there, um, if we get full health. And if we don't get full health, Lard actually is just a speed down. I don't think we actually even get any hearts 
for the heart capacity. So it's, it's weird in that it's not really worth picking up right now, but it may be extremely worth picking up if we end up getting, uh, if we end up getting anything that gives us an, more red hearts. Everything else, you know, you know, Brother Bobby's is okay, uh, at, at times. We should, since we have good speed, we can kill Lust first, and then kill Gluttony last. And by killing Gluttony last, we'll guarantee ourselves some HP. Come on, shoot it. Uh, that's good. So if we can just basically repeat that room over and over, we'll have a pretty good chance of, of success here. I can probably afford to use one bomb on Daddy Longlegs. Oh, that's gonna do jack shit. All right, probably shouldn't use one bomb on Daddy Longlegs. Did I get hit twice somehow? Like, why am I all of a sudden, I'm two hearts down. I gained two hearts on the last room. I must have missed uh, when I lost one heart. If so, that makes me a big dummy. Almost got hit again. Oh, come on, Daddy Longlegs. DLL, as I call you. Uh, I've never called him that. So, Lard is a weird one. I think we're just gonna pass it up. Oh, almost took some damage there. I think we're gonna pass Lard up in the hopes of getting some better items here. Those are not better items. Little Chad is an interesting item. Lemon Mishap is one we'll pick up and put back down if I remember. Hopefully we live long enough to get another reroll. Say what you will about the way I play Isaac, but um, you can't deny that at least right now, I'm doing what I can. I'm not taking the easy way out. I'm, I'm taking the very difficult way out in the hopes of uh, in the hopes of guaranteeing myself a bit better chance of success. Because as of right now, it's not looking super good. All right, like I, I could have at least put up a fight against Blue Baby, but it would have been uh, it would have been an extremely unlikely win. So I, I'm much happier to be taking a little bit of extra time, a little bit of extra work, and uh, maybe giving myself a better chance. Oh, I dodged right into that one. That was bad. Ba basically, like, if you get Monster 2 out of uh, alignment with the other Monster 2, fuck everything, right? Like, there we go. One of them is dead, at least, so I can just... Once this guy stops doing his cycle, uh, I can just laser the shit out of him, or let him laser the shit out of himself, basically, and we'll be good to go. Okay. So again, you know, it might seem like we're in dire straits, but really we only need one good pill or one good uh, tarot card to pull us out of this, or a lot of red hearts. That's the other thing that could happen. Uh, these are Carrion Queen or Husk, I can never remember, that uh, are much quicker than your average, but luckily we're much quicker than average as well. It's tempting to feed him bombs and then just watch him die. Unfortunately, I think it's better for me to save these bombs in case I need to uh, drop them on the blue baby fight. We got very lucky to not take damage there. Probably about like six or seven more hits away from the end. I'm going to take care of these hearts as soon as possible because they're small and annoying. You should be dead. It's okay. Keep it up. That's good. Uh, it's not actually good because a half heart interval is way more valuable right now. Full health. Friends till the end. Okay. Well, we have a reroll, so we go back and we use... Don't get killed on these things. So we'll go back and use our reroll on the, uh... Oh, I'm an idiot. I really thought I had the speed necessary to get through there. None of those items are really what we need, either. Um, remote detonator is now out of the uh, equation, which is great. Okay. Get you over there. Obviously, we can't take damage. That's gonna be a pretty tall ask. We might die here, but if I die, I hope you don't consider this a, a throw. I hope you consider this what it actually was, which is me doing my damnedest to, instead of, it's like what I said in the last episode, you know? It looks more impressive when you die on like a difficult boss, but I'm actually like making a decision that gives me a better chance of winning, even though I might die on a what appears at first to be a lesser enemy. So I really don't like the fact that Super Gluttony is a part of this. Uh, yeah, that's gonna kill me. That's my own fault. Uh, I could have gotten out of that room and maybe snagged something amazing, but I hope you enjoyed that run anyway. There was some tactical plays, some cool tangents, I thought at least. If you did, oh, the typical post Isaac stretch. Uh, if you did, make sure to click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, uh, subscribe if you want to see more Isaac in the future. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.